Hello, hello, hello. So this is part two in the Live Looping with Ableton series, and this time we're going to go over Looper. Looper is a proprietary device that Ableton designed that very closely resembles the same functionality that like the Boss uh, Loop Station RC series uh, do, except what's cool about it is that it, it has a lot of really powerful features that allow you to use it inside of Ableton and even control aspects of your set just from the Looper itself. So let's just dive into a single looper and, and kind of get to know the device a little bit. So the first thing you'll notice is there's this huge, what they call the multi-purpose transport button. And this huge record button, basically what it does is it allows you to use simply just one MIDI controller or one key command on your keyboard or however you want to do this to control the most important aspects of the looper. So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. Okay, so the, the first thing that happens, and it depends upon this setting, but when you finish your loop, you're going to send Ableton the, uh, the clock signal, and then the next thing you'll notice is that it'll be in either overdubbing mode or in play mode. Now, if I have this on play mode setting, then when I hit the button the second time, it'll just play. But most of the loopers that you, that you see on the market now go directly to dubbing mode, and I can toggle back and forth with that same button, right? Just back and forth. Super easy. So I just overdub. Now if I hit this pedal twice very quickly, I'll stop the whole thing. As well as the Ableton clock. This is really, really powerful stuff. And all I have to do is just step on it again to get it to start. Also, if while it's playing, if I step on it once and then step on it again and hold it, I can actually clear the whole device. Boom. So let's explore Looper a little bit. If you look down here, there's a, a quantization setting. So we can either use the global quantization or we can divide the quantization up into to smaller or larger parts uh, that, are, that are different than the global setting. It's, it's super powerful to do this because depending upon whether you have a lead in or you have um, a different kind of song that requires a different kind of uh, division, then you can set it here. The next section is the, in, in this record area, will actually show you how many bars you're going to set the looper to record. Uh, I had a fella that posted on another video asking, wouldn't it be great if you could set how long your recording was before you even went to record? Well, you can do that not only in looper, but in clips and live, you can do that everywhere. And here, you can predetermine how many bars you'll get, or you can just let it be up, up, to, up in the air. Who knows? And honestly, that's kind of, in my opinion, the best setting because, you know, this will retrofit itself to whatever you're trying to do, uh, depending upon how you control it. I already went over this control, and this is how you tell the looper whether to just go directly into play mode or into overdub mode. Down here, you have song control. You can make it so that the looper doesn't do anything to the song. But I like to keep it on stop and start song because if you, you can end up using looper as the main transport control from your foot for the entire set that you're using. So say you're a saxophonist or a trumpet player, you're a guitar player, you're a vocalist. You know, you can use the looper to control the entire device from your feet or from your hands, depending upon what you have. Now, the tempo control, this is how you get the looper to set the tempo for live if the clock is stopped. Okay? Um... We've already went over that. So in this next section, I'm going to have to record a riff in order to show you what the speed control can do. So I'm going to switch off this to uh, instant play mode because uh, speed control only works if you have it in play mode, not dub mode. So here we go. So now if I hit this button, I can go up an octave, which doubles the speed or down. <laughs> you can go way low or you can go way high. You can even go in between. So it kind of acts like a tape player. And then you can also hit the reverse button. So 
So in the next section, we have a feedback control. And what this does is it basically takes every single time you record a new riff, it will have a certain amount of volume that it will feed back into the system so that you can continue to dub. So for every dub that you do, uh, you could set a different volume level for those dubs versus what you're playing at the time. This is useful for if you're playing solos over top of something. I commonly find that I like to have it between 80 and 90 because it allows you, uh, the audience as well as you to focus on what you're, playing on what you're playing at the time that you're playing it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to make it drastic so you can hear. I'm going to put it at 75%. So here we go. So now it's playing at full volume, but when I play over top of it, and I put it in play mode, now it's down to 75. I can even set it at 25, okay? And I'll go ahead and do another riff. And now when I go into play mode, So as you can see, it really drastically reduces that volume. That's all that, that feedback's doing. So also in Looper, underneath the feedback, there's this input-output drop-down menu. And basically what it does is it allows you to choose when Looper will allow audio to go through it or when it won't. So depending upon your setup, let's say you're doing hardware monitoring with your, with your audio interface, this will allow you to just basically pick which kind of setup you want to use. And you, you'll know when you go ahead and, and, and plug in all your devices, you'll know which one you need to use. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So those are pretty much all the controls that you would find yourself using in a live setting. And, and, and I just want to show you that if I hit the MIDI switch for MIDI mapping, notice how much stuff turns to blue. How incredible is that? You could make any setup that you want with Looper. I mean, it's, it's incredible. You even have the individual controls right here that you could map to. You have all of this functionality that you could change with with knobs, sliders, foot controllers, whatever you want. I mean, the, the possibilities with Looper are completely and utterly endless. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you another setup uh, using multiple loopers to create what I would consider a pretty robust live looping setup.